Hi, welcome to Marker Board Videos. Today's video is about energy of motion, kinetic energy, and we're also going to talk about the work energy theorem. But let's start with kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is abbreviated KE, so if you see me write KE anywhere, you'll know I mean kinetic energy. And it is energy of motion. So if something isn't moving, it has no kinetic energy. It has to physically be in motion. The equation for kinetic energy, kinetic energy is one half times mass times velocity squared. The only thing that's squared is the velocity, one half mv squared. You'll hear that a lot, so get used to it. Kinetic energy takes many forms. Thermal energy, sound energy, light energy, those are all considered forms of kinetic energy. We'll come back to that in just a minute. So using this equation, if speed doubles, and I'm going to use the word speed and velocity interchangeably in this video because while velocity is a vector quantity and speed is not, generally things only travel in one direction. They may travel northwest or southeast, but they're usually traveling forward and not backwards. Okay? So if speed doubles, if this V becomes 2 instead of 1, what happens to kinetic energy? Well, it's really important to remember that velocity is squared. So if this goes from 1 to 2, this goes up to 4. This gets quadrupled. So if this is doubled, this is quadrupled. If this is tripled, this changes to 3 times as big. 3 squared is 9. That's 9 times as big. If this is 10 times as big, 10 squared is 100. Kinetic energy is 100 times as big. So I just want you to remember that this is a square function. So as this changes, this also changes, but you have to square this number to figure out how much. Kinetic energy of a moving object is equal to the work. It's equal to work. So what kind of work are we talking about? We're talking about the work necessary to get an object to a certain speed from rest, because this is 1 half mv squared. So to get an object, you've got something at rest, you're going to get it up to 45 kilometers per hour, that's going to take a certain amount of work or the amount of work needed to bring it to a stop. So something is traveling at 45 miles or kilometers per hour and you want it to be zero, it's going to take a certain amount of work to get it to stop. So by putting these two things together, we're saying 1 half mv squared, which is the equation for kinetic energy, is equal to force times distance, which is the equation for work. If work is done, there is an energy change. If there is an energy change, work is done. There has to be an energy change in order for work to be done. Which leads us right into the work energy theorem. It says that work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Work is equal to change in kinetic energy. Change is required. No change, no work. So let me give you three examples. You have this big old box on the floor and you're trying to push it and it doesn't move. Well, if it doesn't move, you've done no work. There's no change in kinetic energy. If you push the box on a frictionless floor, really slippery floor, and you just push it, the work is equal to the kinetic energy because initially the kinetic energy was zero, right? It had no velocity. So work is equal to kinetic energy. Now if you push the box, third case, you're pushing box at a constant speed, the net force and the net work is zero. Now why would that be? Because if it's a constant speed, there's no change in velocity. And this is changing kinetic energy. Well, your mass of the box probably didn't change. So the only thing that could have changed was velocity. No velocity change, no kinetic energy change, no work. It's just status quo. It just keeps moving like it should have been moving, like it was all along. The work energy theory, theorem up, up, applies to decreasing speed as well. So it's not just when things are speeding up, it's when things are slowing down. If you have more kinetic energy, it's going to take more work to stop it. Twice the kinetic energy, twice the work to stop. Five times the kinetic energy, five times the work to stop. That's what the work energy theorem says. So a car with twice the velocity has four times the kinetic energy, and if it has four times the kinetic energy, it needs four times the amount of work to stop, plus the reaction time of the driver. So let me give you some a, a, a graphic, if you will, of what it looks like. If you have a car traveling at 45 kilometers per hour, it takes about 10 meters. There's about a 10 meter skid, 
let's pretend like you're 45 kilometers per hour, you hit the brake, the car skids 10 meters. Double that 45 and go up to 90. Now you have doubled your velocity, which means your kinetic energy has gone up by two squared, right? It's four times as much. It's going to take four times the distance to stop. So instead of 10 meters to stop, it's going to take 40 meters to stop. If you double it again, or you're four times your original, if you're four times your original, four times four is 16. Four squared is 16. That means at 180 kilometers per hour, it's going to take about 160 meters worth of skidding. I couldn't even fit it on my board, 160 meters. So as your speed changes, your kinetic energy changes by a um, square factor. And as your kinetic energy changes, that's how your work changes. I just want to warn you though that kinetic energy is kind of sneaky. You expect to see a, roll, roll, a ball rolling or a car driving or something like that. You don't always. Kinetic energy can take various forms. It can be in the form of heat, which is the molecules moving. It can be in the form of sound, which is vibration of molecules as well. It can be in the form of, of light, which is photons of energy traveling. Or it can be in the form of electricity, which is about atoms. So you don't always find it like a ball rolling or a bike stopping, that kind of stuff. Sometimes kinetic energy is heat, sound, light, or electricity.